this kind of loyalty is referring to a, a connection with something outside of yourself. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you've spoken about like existentialism or even just atheism in general as um, as leading naturally to an, an individualism as a focus on the on the self and uh, ideas that maybe the Christian faith can um, instill in you is um, allowing you to sort of look outside of yourself. So connection, I mean, loyalty fundamentally is about other beings uh, and yeah, uh, other beings. And I mean, I, th I think, I don't know what it is in me, but I'm very much drawn to that idea. And um, I think humans in general are drawn to that idea. You can you can make all kinds of evolutionary arguments, all that kind of stuff. But uh, people always kind of tease me because uh, I talk about love a lot. <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of um, non-scientific things about love, right? Like, what what the heck is that thing? Why why do we even need that thing? It uh, seems to be an annoying burden that uh, <laughs> that we we get so much uh, joy in in life from a connection with other human beings, deep. Uh, lasting connections with human beings. Same thing with loyalty. Why Why do we get so much value and pleasure and strength and meaning from loyalty, from a connection with somebody else, uh, going through uh, thick and thin with somebody else, going through some hard times? I mean, some of the, you know, the closest friends I, I have is going through some, some rough times together. And that, that seems to make life deeply meaningful. Uh, what is that? So it, yeah, um, I, uh, that's uh, that resonates with me, and I obviously I would I would affirm it. Um, uh, I think just to just to correct the implication that you made, I I don't think it's necessarily the con the consequence of atheism uh, that we that we lose track of those kinds of things. I I, I mean I think that atheists can be loyal, okay, if you like. Right. Um, the question more often comes up in the context of, you know, where does morality come from? Mm -hmm. And loyalty, I think, and duty are related to one another. You know, if we have loyalty to someone, then we have a duty to them, okay, as well. And I think that insofar as we see ourselves as having some kinds, any kinds of duties or moral compulsions with respect to our relationships to other people, it's a, I think it's a question that always arises. Well, where does these where do these come from? And there there are various approaches that people have towards deciding what makes ethics or or morality moral. Okay, but I do think it's the case that um, it's very hard to ground morality um, in a, in any kind of absolute way or a persuasive way um, in mere human relationships. And so it's certainly the case that in Christianity, um, there is a sense in which um, morality and you know the morality of morals comes from a transcendent place, from a, a transcendent deity, and that we, um, that we ground our the compelling force of of morals on God uh, more than we do on individuals, because after all, you know, if it if you if you've got nothing but you know other people, why should you you know treat your neighbor well? Why shouldn't you defraud your neighbor if it's good for you? Well, you know, you can construct all kinds of arguments, and some of them are, you know, obviously arguments that are commonplace in religion too. You should do as you would be done by, and all this kind of thing. Right. But none of that seems any any more than mere pragmatism to most people. Okay, and so that's what that's one of the things. If if you, that Nietzsche, amongst others, you know, really identified. You know, if God is dead, if if the idea of God is grounding our moral behavior is no longer viable in the West, which Nietzsche thought that it wasn't, okay, then what does ground it? And, and he had no good answer for it. In fact, he claimed there was no answer, but then he couldn't live with that. And so he invented the idea of the Ubermensch, hmm. you know, this, this superior human being, okay? And this was uh, a different way of trying to ground morality, not a very successful one. You know, you could argue that, is the forerunner of the sort of uh, 
racism of Hitler's regime and 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 so forth um, that you know we've in the West thankfully shied away from uh, in the in the past uh, uh, half or three quarters of a century, but um, you know I think it is the case that uh, Christianity gives me a basis for my moral beliefs that is more than mere pragmatism. Yeah, but there, there is a, so stepping outside of all of that, there, there does seem to be a powerful stabilizing, like we humans are able to hold ideas together, like in a distributed way, uh, outside of uh, whether God exists or not, or any that, just our ability to kind of converge together towards a set of beliefs uh, into sometimes into tribes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, um, I don't know if it's inherent to being human beings. I'm, I hope not because now if I look on Twitter uh, and there's uh, there's the red team and the blue team, right? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's almost like uh, it's it's a care it's some kind of TV show that we're living in uh, that people get into these tribes and they hold a set of beliefs that sometimes don't. Um, I mean, they they are beliefs for the sake of holding those beliefs, and we get this intimate connection between each other for sharing those beliefs. And we spoke to the the things about loyalty and love, and that's the thing that people feel inside the tribe. And it seems very human that within that tribe, those beliefs don't necessarily always have to be connected to anything. It's just the fact that, uh, you know, I've uh, did sports uh, uh, my whole life. And whenever you're on a team, the bond you get with, with other people on the team is incredible. And the actual sport is, is often the silliest I mean, I don't play ball sports anymore, but the ball when I played like soccer or tennis, I mean, all those sports are silly, right? You're you're <laughs> playing with a little ball, but there's the bond you get is so deeply meaningful. So I I just it's interesting to me on the, on the sociological level that um, it's it's possible to me whatever the beliefs of religion is, um, whatever they're actually grounded in, they they might be. Uh, they might have a power in themselves. I think there is tribalism everywhere, and uh, I think tribalism in the U.S. at the moment is rather difficult to bear from right. my point of view. Um, and it's, I think, fed by the internet and social media and so forth. But, but it's, but historically, tribalism has has been a trait and remains a trait in humans. The genius of Christianity is that it supersedes tribalism. I mean, yes, when the Hebrews um, thought about Yahweh, initially they thought about him as their tribal deity, just like the tribal deities round about about them. And so, but and and yet, from you know early on in Hebrew history, the crucial thing that Yahweh came to mean, or I would say, revealed of himself to them was that he wasn't just a tribal deity. He was the God that created the whole thing. And if he is the God of the whole thing, then he's not just the God of the Hebrews, or in the case of, you know, uh, Americans, God is not just the God of Americans. He's the God of everybody, okay? And that is a way, in a way, the most amazing um, transcending of tribal loyalties. And uh, one of the crucial, you know, occasions in the New Testament, um, you know, when, when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, um, you know, the, the, the apostles and the, and the disciples speak in other tongues, and there are people from all, all the countries, you know, round about, hear them in their own languages. And so, you know, whether, whether you take that as factual or not, that is the a statement of the transcendent um, aspects of Christianity, or the claimed transcendent aspects of Christianity, that it transcends culture. And that's certainly something which I find appealing. 